Welcome to Trust the Badge. In this episode, I interview Mr. Kash Patel, who under former President Donald Trump, worked as Chief of Staff to the Secretary of Defense, served as the Deputy Assistant to the President, and was the Senior Director of Counterterrorism at the National Security Council. Our conversation surrounds the topic of the FBI raiding former President Trump's residence in August of 2022. But before we jump into the interview, here are a few details about the FBI raid and the events leading up to it. According to The Guardian in June of 2023, when Trump left the White House, he took documents relating to his presidency with him to Mar-a-Lago his estate in Florida. However, the documents in Trump's possession are required to be handed over to the National Archives and Records Administration, also known as NARA. In May of 2021, NARA requested the documents to be returned, in which 15 boxes worth of documents were returned, but apparently additional documents were still missing. Fast forward to August of 2022, the FBI raided Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence to retrieve the additional missing documents. Mr. Patel gives his perspective as to how the FBI was weaponized against former President Trump and as to why he thinks that, along with his opinions for building trust with federal and local law enforcement. Let's begin with an introduction of Mr. Patel. Hey, it's great to be with you. My name is Cass Patel. I'm a currently a senior advisor for President Trump for National Security defense and intel and uh, serving in government for 16 years, various roles, national security prosecutor, federal public defender, and then um, in the Trump administration running counterterrorism and ultimately ended up as the de deputy director of national intelligence and later chief of staff at DOD. So i um, happy to be with you all and thanks for having me on the show. Thank you, Mr. Patel, for being here. I really appreciate your time. When it comes to your opinions about federal law enforcement, as we've seen before, you have strongly opinionated yourself as the FBI being weaponized against former President Trump. Could you just please let the audience know as to why you think that? Yeah, and look, as a former national security prosecutor and public defender before that, due process is a core principle of our um, constitutional republic. And when it's violated by everyday citizens, they're prosecuted for it. What's tragic is when it's violated by those who are charged with protecting us, i.e. the FBI. So it's not a conclusion I came to lightly. I ran the Russiagate investigation for then Chairman Nunes on the House Intelligence Committee, where we exposed the FBI's unlawful activities to illegally surveil President Trump through the FISA process and his campaign. And so, you know, when you find out something like that, it's very disheartening at first because the cops who are supposed to be protecting us were the ones breaking the law. And now you um, fast forward seven, six, seven, eight years later, and you find out many of the reforms haven't been implemented. They've continued to violate the law and the warrant process, the FISA court to unlawfully surveil Americans. And the tragedy of it all is that these guys signed up to serve in leadership positions and for political purposes, they weaponized government to achieve a political end state. And it was okay for them at the FBI to go to a federal court and lie to unlawfully surveil an individual that they didn't like. And now we on the other side who called them out and caught them doing it, we are chastised in the media as the conspirators. But we're not going to be lectured by those in government leadership who broke the law as to how to fix it. We're the ones that want to reform it. I'm the one that wants an FBI. We need a strong government cop uh, law enforcement program, but it needs serious reform. What changes or reforms would you like to see within the FBI to promote that accountability and trust that you ask for? Yeah, that's a great question. Look, whether it's the FISA court or warrants or surveillance or just opening up cases in general, we have to remove the political east, uh, uh, intent that has gone into so many of these decisions and created this two-tier system of justice. I mean, on display right now, you see the former President Trump being prosecuted, I think, unlawfully in New York for, a, for using his own money to pay for a lawyer for legal expenses, which his secretary recorded in a ledger while Donald Trump was president. Now, when you juxtaposition that against Hillary Clinton and her campaign in 2016, when they utilized unlawfully public campaign funds 
to go out and hire a foreign intelligence officer to create a fake steel dossier against President Trump and then mask those payments as legal payments to a law firm in the United States of America. She was not prosecuted. She was not sanctioned. And what we see here is a complete two-tier system of justice. So what we need to do is remove that political bias, that political uh, venom that has seeped in. And look, it's, it's there not because of the everyday folks. It's there because of leadership. Comey, McCabe, Strzok, Lisa Page, Bill Priestap, and so many of these other corrupt FBI folks, including now Christopher Wray, that have not fixed it because they have the mainstream media to rely upon putting out a disinformation narrative that we are the ones that are endangering democracy when these people continue to go out and violate the constitutional rights of Americans. So we need new leadership and we need new rules and regulations about what that leadership can do. And most importantly, when that leadership breaks the law or violates the public trust, they need to be held actually accountable and not given a promotion. When you weaponize law enforcement as per your definition against former President Donald Trump, there needs to be something done for the people who are accountable. However, do you know what's being done right now to hold those people accountable? Well, not much. I mean, look, I'm not in government anymore. I left with the former president and um, we only have an outside looking in window. And what we see, though, is the continued corruption that continues to pour out from the FBI and DOJ. If you look at the President Trump uh, federal documents case taking place in Florida, just this week, Judge Cannon released documents that were redacted by the government, by the FBI, to hide critical information from both the judge, the defense, and the American public. And the core of the corruption that they were hiding was that the Biden administration and the DOJ and the FBI were working hand in glove with NARA, the National Archives, and telling NARA, the National Archives, to not release documents President Trump lawfully had a right to see as the former president and to have. And the entire time for the last two years, the Biden administration has gone out there and said, the FBI and DOJ are independent. My White House counsel's office is not involved. But now we see that the DOJ high-level officials themselves in emails were directing this prosecution in conjunction with Joe Biden's White House. So it's really hard to say that they were politically targeting Donald Trump. And it's also a complete lie for them to say that they have no involvement in the matter when they've literally been caught with their own documentation. And to switch the topic, because Trust the Badge is about building trust between law enforcement and the community, let's just switch over mm -hmm. to the local police force side. Yeah. Uh, just a few years ago, when the Defund the Police movement came out, what are your thoughts on that movement? Look, the Defund the Police movement is a perfect example of the radical left-wing agenda and their hypocrisy projecting on us, those who want law enforcement. We never want to defund law enforcement. But because the mainstream media and the deep state folks that we've been talking about here have allowed their unlawful corrupt practices to permeate to state level entities and county court, county courts and county uh, police offices, we now see that this movement about defunding the police is somehow a popular narrative. And that's the last thing we need. Crime has spiked under the Biden administration in localities across America, murder, drug trafficking, sex trade. Um, narco trafficking and so many other um, awful crimes because police have been defanged. They've been neutralized in their ability to use the Constitution to chase down criminals. And this call to defund police is just a radical left wing overcorrection of what they actually did to President Trump. So it's kind of the irony of all ironies that the folks that broke the law for political gain are now telling us that the cops are, are the ones at the local level who are utilizing their powers erroneously when it's actually just the leadership in Washington, D.C. and the mainstream media allowing this narrative to continue. So we need cops. We need great ones like Bernie Carrick, the former NYPD commissioner. We need our everyday heroes in blue across this country, and I'll support them forever. Absolutely. And would you say that it's mostly the federal law enforcement that needs reform rather than local law enforcement? Yeah, I think if you look at local law enforcement, you see not just at the local everyday street cop level, but you see leadership level decisions, not everywhere, but in the majority of places, that all they want to do is go out and do what they signed up to do, which is protect their community. Their leadership isn't corrupted, unless you're talking about places like San Francisco and L.A. and you know San Jose and all these other lunatic, lunatic places where they allow 
drug needles to pour through the streets and our children to die from CCP fentanyl overdoses. But it's the federal bureaucracy, the federal police state, the FBI, the DHS, and other federal agencies that have been co-opted by the deep state in Washington to serve a political agenda. And whether we're talking about the border disaster or whether we're talking about the federal um, police force being utilized for political ends, or whether we're talking about the fact that the federal force has not been allowed to go out there and safeguard our communities, those are all political decisions authored by the leadership under the Biden administration, Christopher Ray's FBI, and Mayorkas' DHS. So it's really metastasized at the uh, federal level. There's some problems at the state level for sure, but the biggest one is D.C. What message do you have for any current or future law enforcement listening to this interview, and how can they change the perspective of law enforcement in the future? We need you. Sign up. We need more of you. We need you guys to can keep doing what you want to do. We're going to fight to empower you in places like New York City so cops have the authority to go out there and not be afraid to be prosecuted baselessly by district attorneys for police officers for doing their job because it runs um, a front to the political narrative they want to see in the headlines. So I'm so proud of the folks that have stood through this, the men and women that continue to stand, and those that want to serve. I encourage you to do so in a law enforcement capacity. Local law enforcement is the most important form of law enforcement we can have, just like local level politics. And we need it at every level. And we are going to fight this fight for you guys because you guys are the ones on the front line for us. So the least we can do is take the fight to Washington and make sure politics is taken out of police work. I couldn't agree more. Our local law enforcement has been attacked by the media. And over the few years, of course, the defund the police movement has taken across the nation to the point where defunded police stations have seen mm -hmm. a rise in crime rates in those cities. For example, there's a city in Vermont where they did a study of how crime rates has increased. And it was just because of the police quitting their jobs. The defund the police movement created a narrative where cops are evil, but because of that disrespect, a lot of cops did not want to work at their jobs anymore and it caused them to leave. And as a result, the crime rates have spiked throughout the years. And now cities like these are trying to recover from these movements. You're absolutely right. And look, there are a few, unfortunately, there were a few cops across the, the years and across the country that have committed actual crimes and they need to be prosecuted and punished. But we right. can't have those shame the rest of the community and the rest of the police force because those other, the majority of the police officers in this country want to do the job. They're, they're not representative by those other few minimal people that have committed these crimes. But what the radical left wing has done is, like in Vermont, has hijacked that disinformation campaign to say, we don't need cops at all. And look at what's happening, an explosion of crime. And the ironic thing is it's mostly happening in Democratic-run cities, in Democratic districts. Whether you're in Michigan or Minnesota, the cops there have been defanged and the crime is through the roof. And now these members of Congress who represent these districts are actually coming out and taking a 180 saying, well, actually, we can't defund the police. That didn't work. Of course, it didn't work. It was never going to work. We are a community of law enforcement. And when you remove the law from enforcement, um, what you have is crime. Ultimately, how do we as a community trust the bad? Look, I think the overwhelming majority of Americans overwhelming trust the badge. I think we have to go out there and educate some of the Americans that have been seconded by the mainstream media disinformation campaigns that somehow the badge is wrong. The badge is not wrong. The badge is what we need. The shield is what we need. Cops are what we need. Law enforcement is what we need. And we give everyday examples of law enforcement who never wants the um, heroic name in the headline, who do everyday things of saving innocent children, taking drugs off our street, removing guns from our communities, safeguarding our schools for our children. They do this without any fame or glory. And I think if we keep highlighting that and the hypocrisy of the radical left wing defund the police movement, we're going to get more and more Americans back to where we need to be. I think just too many have been provided with the false information and bought over by the Soros-funded disinformation campaigns. And we have to beat that because our country depends on it. Thank you. And just before we end the interview, do you have any final thoughts for our audience? 
Look, I'm, 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 I'm so glad that you have this outreach program. And when you, when we met the other week, I was happy to come on the show. I can encourage your audience to just keep doing what you're doing, get the message out, go post on social media, whether it's Truth Social or elsewhere. And if you need help, once you start getting the message out in an appropriate fashion, let's not take the hyperbole bait that the left wants us to take. Let's just do the work. We're going to win this race. We're going to win in 2024, and we're going to put cops back where they belong, which is the centerpiece of, of upholding our constitutional republic. Thank you for listening to this episode of Trust the Badge. And as always, make sure to follow Trust the Badge on any podcast platform that you are listening on, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. 